we saved our last key speaker for, for now, before the panel will start. And we have now um, uh, Diane Gashumba, who is the ambassador of Rwanda to the Nordic countries. And she's also a former minister of health in Rwanda and a pediatrician. And we are very happy to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Nicolas, for inviting me. I will just uh, present to you a simple model we adopted in Rwanda and that has really contributed to a huge achievement in the um, Mateno. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I was hearing myself. <laughs> so, yeah, this is um, a simple model that was applied in Rwanda for many years. And the reason is because uh, right after the genocide, everything was destroyed, hospitals, we lost uh, uh, human uh, lives, including uh, professors of universities. So we opted to focus on primary health care and mainly on prevention because the conditions, hygiene conditions, and uh, uh, all the basic conditions were destroyed, and we we chose, we opted to really invest heavily in, in prevention. So in Rwanda, we have this pyramid, that's the health sector, and it starts really at the community level, at the whole household level. We have uh, a group of um, doctors in the communities. They are not uh, doctors, they are not nurses, they are not social workers. They are just trained on how to do basic things, how to recognize a fever, how to uh, recognize a danger sign for a newborn, and how to take care of a pregnant woman, uh, which uh, advices a pregnant woman need, and also how to provide um, family planning methods, uh, pills and injectables, and also how to treat uh, um, moderate um, pneumonia and um, how to diagnose malaria. They do malaria diagnosis at the community level using a rapid test. So we have one community health worker per, per 40 household. So one community worker manages uh, uh, 40 household. And um, after this um, level, we have small clinics that are called health posts. They manage around 5,000 uh, people, and it's uh, mainly also preventive measures, hygiene, uh, information and education to the community, but they also treat uh, simple diseases like malaria, pneumonia, and some of these health posts are now expanded to, to, to provide uh, delivery services, so women can go there and deliver. And these health posts are followed by what we call health centers that are bigger, and all these uh, clean, some small clinics are managed by nurses. And 80% um, of our health conditions are really managed there. That's why we really invested heavily in those levels, the three levels, and um, and. Uh, Upper, we have uh, district uh, hospitals, provincial hospitals, like in uh, other countries. But this um, model has really helped because it, for example, one of the things we managed to do is to reduce the walking distance to the nearest health facility. Before this, uh, women, pregnant women had to walk for five hours. You can imagine what it is for a pregnant woman. And with uh, the four antenatal care visit uh, standards, by WHO, it's, uh, it's, it's impossible. So these health posts and the community health workers have managed to reduce uh, the walking distance uh, in Rwanda to 25 minutes. But we don't have them across the country. We are still uh, building uh, more and more to make sure that we cover the entire country. So this is, um, we have, for example, the goal to build uh, 1,000 of them uh, by uh, 2030. And uh, we have also um, a good, good model that involves um, private the private sector in Rwanda. The private sector is more and more uh, interested in uh, 
in uh, investing in the health sector, especially these health posts. Most of them are managed by uh, under a PPP model, and we have a nurse that is trained to be an entrepreneur, and um, we also mobilize resources um, out of um, Rwanda. But uh, the one of the good things also we have that has uh, usually contributed to the success of uh, the health sector in Rwanda is the health insurance. We have a health insurance that covers 90% uh, of our, our population, so people don't fear to go to the health facility because they just pay 10% and the rest is uh, covered by the health insurance. So geographic access and um, a financial access um, are the two major contributors of uh, this success. This just shows the distribution of uh, regional offices that um, oversee uh, these health posts I talked about. And also we have um, a central office or agency that um, is uh, mandated to supply medi medicines and uh, and um, small equipment, and we are trying to also decentralize this uh, supply chain to avoid uh, uh, stock out of uh, medicines and equipment. So this shows one of the examples of what these nurses entrepreneurs can do. Um, I mentioned family planning, I mentioned malaria prevention, and uh, I mentioned also um, some services around uh, maternal and child health, but the most uh, also uh, I forgot to mention water and sanitation and the hygiene. This is being done at the community level. And that is one of the factors that uh, were proven to be explaining why we were not uh, very much hit by COVID. Because we had a strong uh, community-based um, system and the hygiene and sanitation is uh, in our culture. But I want also to say that it's not perfect. There are some rural areas that don't have water. So we were uh, definitely also hit by um, COVID and some other pandemic. But if you compare with uh, um, some surrounding countries, I would say we are doing quite good. So this is um, the model of this health post. And um, I'm happy also to mention the Norshven hub that is uh, focusing on entrepreneurship. It was inaugurated yesterday. It's a Swedish initiative uh, initiated by uh, Niklas. It's a very good initiative for East Africa. And we have some of these nurses, um, they go to this hub, they get trained, they bring their small ideas. They are, it's a kind of incubator for nurses or IT young uh, people, students. They go there and they uh, discuss their ideas with them. Um, big achievers, and they are connected to um, the external world. So um, we have managed to, I would say, maybe these figures are not very important or they don't, um, they're not clear. I would say that half of the country is really covered by this health post. So in half of uh, Rwanda, we can say that uh, patients don't have to work more than uh, 25 uh, minutes before they get to the nearest health facility. So these are some of the achievements, output of this model. Uh, in, I think it was uh, last year or two years ago. We had 20,000 um, new clients uh, in family planning. And we have surveys that show that people don't uh, use family planning because uh, the services are not, uh, are not close to them. So if a woman doesn't feel any pain, it's difficult in Africa to tell her, go to the hospital, go to get uh, pills, go get uh, injectables or IDU. But the fact that we brought the services uh, close to them, they can easily go and uh, family planning uptake has really um, improved in Rwanda. And um, we also had, um, uh, re today, respiratory infection is the first uh, cause of mortality in uh, pediatrics in Rwanda. And with uh, this geographic access and uh, financial accessibility, we managed to treat more cases and uh, therefore to decrease uh, mortality due to uh, respiratory in infection. And I want also to say that um, this model has really uh, led to um, most of the deliveries happening in, um, in um, 
health facilities in Rwanda, more than 98% of Rwandan women deliver at health facility level, and also the vaccination coverage. We have more than 98% of our, our children that are fully vaccinated, and uh, malaria is no longer a huge issue in Rwanda. Um, yeah, because of this rapid test that is available at the community level, at the household level, I would say, um, it has really impacted um, our data and uh, that in, in health. So we are trying also to digitalize our systems and we are open to partnering with um, any technology that um, can improve uh, the way we, we treat our, we do, do diagnosis and treatment, but also most importantly, the way we keep, we keep our data. We use, in most of our clinics, we use uh, electronic medical record, but we are still paper-based in some of these uh, health facility and um, it, it impacts uh, the quality of care. Uh, digitalization is um, a priority. I think this uh, has been said. Um, yeah, this is about digitalization. To show that it's really um, um, a priority. And we want to build a multidisciplinary team at these uh, small clinics level. Yeah, and we have uh, we have really invested in data. I would say that uh, in Rwanda, it's uh, very easy to access data. If you want to do research, it's one of the best places to do and do research because uh, data are available. We have uh, small rooms where we keep our data and uh, t teams at health facility level, they meet and uh, analyze data. They look at the trends and I can, for example, tell you that nowadays, because we really managed to uh, to reduce drastically the neonatal mortality and uh, to do prevention. We really worked on infectious diseases, but nowadays we face a huge challenge with uh, non-communicable diseases. So it's a time to, to rethink um, our strategy and see how to focus on uh, non-communicable diseases. So we have a strategic plan of um, seven years, so for the next five years, we, our target is really to build more uh, um, health facilities, more um, of these uh, health posts, and um, to make them operational, to uh, bring um, preventive um, measures to these clinics, and also to invest in uh, digitalization uh, here uh, and the innovation. Here I want to mention an example of uh, uh, an innovation that has really impacted uh, maternal uh, mortality in Rwanda in a positive manner, the use of drones. Rwanda was the first country to use drones uh, to deliver blood product to the health facilities. Because in some places, roads are not uh, good, uh, they are not uh, good, and uh, then um, cars were spending uh, much time to deliver uh, blood and um, blood product, and then we started using drones. And I can tell you that when we started, for me, it was a, kind of, it was a joke. <laughs> I was <laughs> laughing at it. I didn't really believe in this um, until it happens. I was Minister of Health. I think it was the first project that I uh, found in this ministry, and uh, myself didn't believe in it. But today, we really have uh, good surveys showing how much uh, this, uh, the use of drones have, has reduced uh, maternal mortality because, as you know, postpartum hemorrhage is the first cause of mortality in maternity. So this is um, the plan to build um, more health posts. When you look at this figure, the total, the total cost that is uh, 18 uh, million USD, you would say it's a lot of money, but uh, looking at the impact, it's worth it. It's worth it and uh, we are eager to share with others. For example, I would say that this initiative was, um, was um, embraced by uh, some other countries like South Sudan. They have started also using this model and it is showing a very, very, very um, uh, huge impact. I want to end my presentation by uh, saying that this uh, seems to be a small thing for a country like Sweden, but uh, it's uh, really connected to the culture. And uh, my message is that to be able to contribute to global neonatal research or global neonatal impact, 
one has to understand the local culture. Because what uh, the, uh, some um, presenters said it very well, what works here is not necessarily going to work in another country. And Rwanda happens to be a small country, and we opted for a decentralized model. So all the, the model you saw uh, in health works also for local governance and also for schools. So these health centers are connected to schools, connected to a local leader that is elected and that has to deliver on these uh, on health indicators. And um, if you, maybe a simple example, um, how did we manage to vaccinate our girls against uh, HPV? We have a high rate of vaccination. 93% of our girls are vaccinated for HPV. It's because we went through schools. Yeah, we worked with schools, parents, teachers. Yeah, we, we talked about family engagement. We really um, work with the families and uh, teachers and students themselves. We explain to them when they understand and when they, they deal with the people they trust, because they trust these community health workers, because they are one of them. They don't see them as doctors or uh, politicians. These are people that are elected from the community. So they are part of the community, and when they speak, it's just the message just spread. And they don't think twice. They trust them, and uh, they, uh, they are happy to, to, to be uh, taught by one of them. So. This is uh, what explains the success of um, some of the success of uh, the, the health sector in Rwanda. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Diane. I think maybe actually we have time for one question, if there is uh, one for Diane. Otherwise, uh, oh, no, I think we have one there. Ah, ah, the microphone, sorry. Yeah. I think you need this for the, for the online. For the recording. Yes, sorry. Um, I was wondering more about the, the, you were calling the nurses entrepreneurs, and I was wondering what they are doing more than being nurses. Thank you, yeah. More than being nurses, they are managers of these health posts. So they also get some trainings on how to manage a health post, but they also manage them on a private uh, basis. Um, patient come, they pay 10%, but the insurance also pays 90%, and the nurses can get their salaries. So they are better paid, and uh, another thing they do, they can sell product. Yeah, we have a partnership with uh, um, a manufacturer of um, uh, malaria kits, but also um, malaria, how do you call it, repellent product yeah, for mosquitoes. And uh, they supply these nurses and even these community health workers, and they sell the product. So their conditions are economic conditions are good. They can even invest in other projects. They are part of cooperatives. Uh, within the community, and they are leaders because they, they have been trained, so they also help uh, their peers in the community. Thank you. 